So one of the best ways to understand the current state of affairs of machine learning being applied to healthcare is to read research papers. So in this video, I'm going to share a framework for reading these papers and kind of analyzing them and understanding them. And I'm also at the end of the video going to suggest what I would consider to be some of the key papers uh, which I would recommend to read to both historical papers to kind of gain a background understanding and also some of the more recent papers so you know what kind of the cutting edge techniques are. So the first thing that I'll try and do is just get an overview of the paper as a whole. Um, I'll try and summarize the paper in maybe one or two sentences and just really hone in on what exactly did they do. I'll think about the context of, do I know any previous papers that have done something similar? And how does this one different? What does it add to the field? Who are the authors? What institutions are they from? To get an idea of what sort of people were doing this research. And at this point, it's also worth asking yourself, is this a paper that would be worth reading? And because one of my uh, Cambridge supervisors uh, kind of gave me some really great advice, which is sometimes the best way to read a paper is not to read it at all. Uh, and I think that's a, like a really great point. There's a huge amount of research papers out there. There's a lot of really interesting work and a lot of hard work has gone into a lot of these papers, but ultimately you only have a limited life. You only have a limited attention span. So you should really prioritize the key papers to read. And often the most appropriate decision is actually not to read that research paper um, and maybe find a different research paper or just actually do something else uh, at that moment in time. But assuming you do then decide to read the rest of the research paper, um, there's some other things that I also like to consider. One of the things that I find really helpful uh, when looking at these kind of papers is to understand what actually is the data. So what type of data did they use? Did they use images? Did they use text? Is it blood tests? Um, is it variable like vital signs or um, you know what sort of variables were actually included in the models that they trained? And often you'll see that there's like an appendix and they go through all the features that were included in the model. But I just find looking at this really helps me to understand exactly what is this paper doing? Like what sort of data did they use and um, how did it all work? And of course, uh, machine learning models are very data driven. So um, it's very relevant to know what sort of data are they using? Then also in terms of the data, I will ask actually how good is the data? Like how good is the quality? Um, did they have a large volume of data? How was it collected? Also, how did they label the data? So because most of the studies in machine learning applied to healthcare are gonna be supervised learning, there's gonna be labeled data where uh, maybe they've got a group of dermatologists to look at these skin lesions and say which ones they think are cancerous, or a group of radiologists to look at chest X-rays and say, say which ones have pneumonia. You wanna know how good was that process? So um, if it was experts, you know, how many experts did they have? What sort of expert level were they? How did they decide how to group these answers together? So if they had six people and they had a disagreement, what was the process there? And ultimately just understand, can you trust the labels in this data set? And in terms of the level of the labeling, sometimes it will also be labeled maybe by um, like a pathology slide. So for example, if you had a chest X-ray and you thought it might be cancerous and then that cancer then got taken out uh, and they looked at it on the slide and it actually was cancerous, then that's like a label that you can really trust well. Uh, whereas actually, um, if it was just based on the kind of a radiological opinion, you're gonna be slightly less confident that it is definitely the right answer. Some other things to consider about the data set is, is it representative of the population that it's being applied to? So uh, has it got an appropriate mix of demographics? Has it got an appropriate mix of disease types? Um, and are those the same types of disease that you'd expect to see in the place that you're applying it to? Are there any skews towards particular classes? So for example, if you had 10,000 chest X-rays, how many of them actually had pathology on? If it was only 500 of them, then you'd kind of be a bit worried that maybe the algorithm is not gonna have been trained as well as if there was like 2,000 or 5,000 examples of the pathology itself. I then also like to look at the methodology. Um, so I will look at what sort of techniques did they use? Did they use convolutional neural networks for imaging? Did they use kind of classifiers, random forest, logistic regression, sport vector machines? Um, basically understanding, you know, what actually algorithm did they use? Because again, that's also very useful to understand and it kind of gives you an idea of the sort of task they're performing. And I think if at this point, when you're reading these papers, um, you're not like familiar with some of the terms, which I think tends to be the case like quite early on if you're not as familiar with the area, then it's fine just to go away and look up, okay, so they used a random forest classifier, uh, what actually is that? And then kind of go away and Google, read what it is, and then kind of come back and read the paper. Or maybe they used a particular type of convolutional neural network, they use like a unit, and you're not sure what a new unit is, then actually this can be quite a good opportunity and quite a good kind of prompt to then go away, read about that area, and gradually through reading these papers, build up an understanding of the sorts of techniques that are commonly used um, and how they all fit in. As well as the techniques, I think it's also worth looking at what the output measures are. So maybe um, you're trying to predict certain classes, maybe you're trying to uh, feed into some sort of decision-making process like a referral decision. Uh, maybe this is being used in screening and you want to detect the kind of uh, true positive rate and the false positive rates. Many different types of outputs that you can get from a machine learning model and there's different ways that you can measure them. So that's worth bearing in mind. It's also worth looking at whether it's a retrospective study or a prospective study. Uh, in general, prospective and randomized control trial studies are better than retrospective. Uh, and I touched on this in the last video. It's worth noting like, is it retrospective? Because then the results 
results themselves you're kind of like less confident in whereas if it's more prospective randomized control trials then you can be a bit more confident uh, in what those studies shows and also how well did they explain exactly what they did like did they explain it in detail is there anything you don't really understand because actually part of the methodology is you know how well did they describe it and sometimes they maybe won't describe it in detail they won't say uh, what they did to try and avoid overfitting those sorts of things um, so then you might again question how good that study is or how like strongly you would trust it so you also want to look at the performance metrics um, and in particular common metrics are like F1 score, AUC, precision, recall. Um, you'll want to have a look at those and kind of analyze, you know, how well did they do? Are there any kind of limitations with some of these metrics? Like maybe they haven't reported all the metrics that they should have or it doesn't really give you a full picture of it. I think in general, these models should be reporting multiple different metrics because different metrics kind of show different elements of the performance and you don't want to have some kind of gaps um, and potential flaws in the way that you're reporting the different performance metrics. If you're not like comfortable with those performance metrics, then I have made a previous video where I go through that. Um, so I'll leave a link in the description below. And then what sort of features were important for the performance? So which of the metrics, which of the variables that were fed in actually then were important in the final model? Does that make sense clinically? If you're trying to predict, let's say liver disease uh, and certain of the liver markers are really important, then that kind of makes sense. If there's some other stuff there that doesn't really kind of fit into it, then you might question actually how well that model is doing and like if it's really fitting things appropriately. Sometimes these studies will compare their performance to clinicians. And it's important just to assess, you know, how legit was that comparison? Because sometimes they won't use that many clinicians, uh, or sometimes they'll kind of mix non-expert clinicians with expert clinicians and then average those scores. What sort of information did the clinician have? What sort of information did the algorithm have? Sometimes um, the clinician will have a bit more information because they'll have maybe the image of a chest X-ray and they'll have the history, whereas the algorithm might just have the chest X-ray. Um, so those, that all kind of like affects the comparison between the AI and the clinicians. And then finally, after kind of roughly having considered all those areas, I'll then just make a final kind of summary to myself of, you know, what are the conclusions of this paper? Are the conclusions invalid? Do I trust this paper? You know, is there anything else I would like to see them do? Or there's things I don't really understand about the study? And then kind of asking myself, you know, what would be the next steps? Is this algorithm ready to be applied clinically? Uh, do they need to do another kind of study? Maybe they did a retrospective study, now they need to do a prospective study. If they were doing a prospective study, how might you design that? And just kind of like prompt myself to think about, you know, what would we do uh, in that sort of setting? And then, yeah, ultimately kind of come up with an appraisal for the paper. And sometimes I will give a paper like a kind of score on how much I trust it based on the methodology, perhaps a score out of 10, um, and maybe like how interesting or how exciting for the field I think this paper is. So yeah, those are the kind of rough sort of questions I tend to ask myself when I'm reading these papers. Um, it's not super comprehensive. Those are just the main things that I think I tend to think about. I find it can be quite tricky to read these papers initially because there's often a lot of technical terms and if you're not familiar with the area, you're gonna see a lot of terms that you just don't really understand and haven't seen before. But I think what's nice about reading papers is actually you kind of build up that intuition over time. You'll, you'll, every time you see a term, you'll kind of Google and understand that term. So next time you see that, you'll understand what it means. Uh, and maybe next time you'll read a different term and kind of you gradually build up this picture of what are the sorts of techniques that we use, what are the sort of performance metrics that we use, um, and gradually over time get to the point where you can kind of read these papers quite quickly and understand them. And therefore you can understand, you know, what's the current state of machine learning in healthcare because being able to read papers is just a really valuable skill uh, for understanding this particular research field, but just in general as well. I've written up a kind of summary of these main points that I look at in a short PDF. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can download that as well. And hopefully that can be a useful guide for you when you're reading these machine learning papers. So if you're just starting out, I think you could just pick any paper, start reading it, and you'll be able to learn kind of the basics because you'll be able to see what sort of techniques are mentioned and what sort of things they're doing. But there are some particular papers that I would highly recommend reading, which I kind of consider like the landmark papers of machine learning being applied to healthcare. Um, I'm gonna link all those in the description below, so feel free to check those out. I think reading those probably is actually what I'd recommend because that way you're firstly gonna learn about, you know, what is the current state of the arts, and what are the key kind of landmarks, etc. You're also then gonna learn how to read machine learning papers in general through the process of having read these papers. But I would really recommend just having a go. I think it can be a bit daunting at first, particularly if you're not from a kind of academic or research background, being able to read research papers is, is a bit of a superpower. So I would just recommend um, taking the time to kind of develop that skill and then that will just be helpful um, for the future kind of going forward. If you already have a pretty decent grasp of what I've spoken about, or maybe you think these are a bit too basic, then there's a couple of links in the description below to uh, more formal kind of longer form academic papers, which describe how to read these papers in a bit more detail and some of the kind of deeper considerations that they recommend you make. In the next video, I'm going to recommend some further resources for getting a better understanding of machine learning and its applications in healthcare. But that's everything for this video. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you in the next one.